Hey all. Uh, let's go through uh, paint it black real quick. Uh, uh, Keith has done it as he does with virtually everything. <laughs> he does it differently on stage than the original live one. And in fact, again, this is not unusual, but over the years that they've done it, um, he does different versions of it live. So uh, when I saw them in 89, uh, he did it down here in a, with an A minor, with no capo. Um, the, I'm tuned to, or thereabouts, to the studio recording, the original one. But I had to fiddle a little bit to get it in tune with a capo at three. So it may be in the crack somewhere. So where you put the capo and where you tune, it's standard tuning, but put the capo and then adjust your tuning so that it, the opening sounds like this. Should sound like tune your D string. Put a K point three, tune your D string to that. And then tune all the other strings according to that. Alright. So uh, the intro is slightly different than he does the riff in the rest of it. So you do a D minor, again I'm gonna call it a D minor just because of the from the capo, but I'm gonna refer to them for what they look like from the capo, <laughs> right? That's the giveaway on how it's tuned, and at least for me, and how it's tuned and where the capo is. When, it goes, when he does that, you can tell he's doing that on a B string up to an E string. So do your D minor on the B string. And I go back and I hit the G string in between them. From B at 3 to open E, up to 3. Right. And then you go back to that G string. Zero, two, three to the high E string, and then just reverse it. Three, two, zero, two on the B string. So at the beginning. That takes a little work, but it's not that difficult. Just get, once you get the capo and you're in a D minor shape, it's pretty easy. And it goes. Now on the recording, it's hard to tell what is the guitar and what is the sitar, which I guess Brian is playing. Um, but it sounds like this to me. Right, so the same thing. Now you're in an A. You go down to A. Except the B string still at three. on a hammer on that B string. So it's a little bit different from the vocal, but it's pretty close. Wait, sorry. That's just an A suspended to A, back to suspended, high E. by D minor C and then F C and then back to D minor. It's another giveaway on the tuning and the capo placement. D minor then off, back on, then E up to three. Upstrokes when you're doing those, so pay attention to that when you're doing it, when you're learning it. Sorry, the D minor to C, then F to C. Till my darkness goes. That's just a 
through G to an A. That's the whole tune. There's no middle part. It does slow down. Just that, but that's still doing the same thing. The thing to get though is the, you know, getting the upstrokes when you need to do them because there's a lot on that high E string. So doing it. That makes it harder to get the. back and hitting those lower strings while you're doing that B and E string stuff. So it'll go. Now which strings you hit other than the B and the E when you're going back to those lower ones, it doesn't really matter because keep the sloppy all over the place. So you can either hit the G or the D and then or you can hit the A when you're doing the A chord. Thing is to get the motion. I mean that's the junga 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 junga. right there in that 10 seconds you've got everything all the pieces to it but again as usual with Keith it's a lot more about what you're doing with this hand and where you're hitting them and you're getting into that <laughs> try to get that sort of feel to it but if you break it up into those little pieces I don't think you'll have any trouble <clears throat> good luck